In Still Rising, you'll play as the Terminator. You'll be tasked with destroying your fellow machines to protect Sarah Connor. Sprinkle in some French Revolution and you've got yourself the latest Souls-like game, Steel Rising. This new Souls-like has a ton of systems and mechanics that you'll need to familiarize yourself with, so here are my tips and tricks for Steel Rising. Let's go. Let me know in the comments down below your own tips and tricks so that we can help each other out. We can all learn about this game together. We'll start with character creation. Now, you play as Aegis. You don't play as a Terminator. That was just a reference for the intro, but you get to pick from four starting classes. These classes give you a head start in a particular build direction, but they don't lock you out of any weapons or general setup. I'll have a full video breaking down these four classes, their strengths, weaknesses, different build ideas. It's probably already out. There'll be a card here if it is already out. Go and watch that video. But at a general high level, these are the four classes. The first is Bodyguard. The bodyguard rely on their strength to withstand hits and deal heavy physical damage to enemies. This is a slow tank style class with basically a lot of health and armor and a very slow weapon that uses a lot of impact and we'll talk about impact a little bit later. The special move here is blocking so really you'll be blocking and then dealing like heavy impact attacks back to their targets. The soldier is next and these are strong fighters that can wield heavy weapons to perform powerful physical attacks. This is like I guess a typical you know soldier in like a souls like game. They have a unique starting weapon with the helper that actually has a ranged attack on it. I kind of like this weapon, but you will be playing similar to a bodyguard, a little bit slower, but you know, you've got these impact attacks and you've got some interesting kit to you. If you don't want to go into a full, like slow plotting kind of class, then this is an option that you want to go around the physical route. The dancer are a highly resistant and can chain attacks together in quick succession to immobilize enemies and inflict critical hits. This is a very fast and agile class. You won't be dealing a lot of like stagger or impact with this class. Instead, you'll focus on immobilizations and critical hits. We'll touch on that in the combat section specifically, but that's what you'll kind of focus on with the Dancer. The Alchemist is a unique class that favor alchemical weapons that can ignite, freeze, or electrocute their enemies and cause persistent elemental affiliations. Again, we'll talk about the affiliations as a whole in the combat section. Chapters will be down below, but this is similar to the Dancer, except they focus on the status effects applying of that frost and freeze and lightning effects that you can do. Exploration tips. As with any Souls-like game, you'll do a decent amount of exploring off the beaten path to find various upgrades as well as finding shortcuts so you can get to various places at a quicker pace. At a certain point when you fight these big titan bosses you will unlock three different tools which will make that exploration a little bit easier and allow you to unlock previously inaccessible areas such as the grappling hook, the alchemist ram and the alchemist dash. These will unlock areas of the city that you previously couldn't open or access because you couldn't jump far enough or knock down a certain wall or be able to grapple up to a higher place. It's also worth mentioning here that side quests are a hugely important part of this game and they unlock relatively later you've got to free certain characters and then they'll give you these side quests and they're entirely optional but they are well worth doing and some of the best unique weapons and gear come from doing those side quests but if you choose not to engage with them you don't have to. You get it early on but it's worth mentioning that the compass is hugely important so you can see those main and side objectives when you put the compass into your back it'll pop up where those objectives are in your current area so it's well worth doing that especially once you start unlocking a lot of the side quests and finding exactly where to go is a bit challenging this will absolutely make that process much easier for you. It's also clear clearly marked where the point of no return is so you can go back and complete anything that you have missed if you want to do those side quests. I just like calling that out because I'm one of those suckers that really like to know if there is a point of no return so that the game tells you if you know you're going to fail these quests if you continue from this point onwards. You'll come across buildings that have this little red dot on them and that means there's people inside that you can talk to. Sometimes they'll just say something, sometimes they'll actually have tasks for you to complete that aren't tracked in your quest log. Say someone might ask you to go fetch them some water or something like that and sometimes they might give you valuable information about a boss that you have coming up, they might tell you about a weakness or how you can actually better defeat that boss. So it's well worth listening to these homies that are hiding in their houses. Stats and attributes. In Still Rising, you have six attributes to pick from when leveling up that will increase your secondary stats. The primary attributes for these are power, which will increase your damage with power scaling weapons and your impact damage. Impact is how much stagger you inflict on targets when you hit them. So having a high impact will stagger them, push them back, do those kind of effects. Agility increases your damage with agility scaling weapons and your immobilization damage. Immobilization is the buildup inside the diamond reticle when you lock onto targets. When that reticle entirely fills up, it will break and essentially like break their stance and then you can follow up with a critical attack. Now this is the only way that you can actually do a critical attack, it's worth calling out. 
elemental alchemy will increase your damage with elemental alchemy scaling weapons as well as your flame frost and formation resistances which are the fire frost and lightning resistances when you do get those status effects applied to yourself durability increases your total health and your balance now truth be told i haven't directly figured out what balance does it doesn't explain it anywhere directly however i think it has something to do with slowing down the charge attack times for you to actually charge up those heavy attacks if you do actually know what this does let me know in the comments down below vigor increases your endurance or your stamina and your critical hit multiplier and as we touched on this is the only way that you can apply critical hits is by breaking immobilization so agility and vigor go together nicely in that regard engineering increases your armor your affliction multiplier which is how much those affliction statuses the flame frost and formation does as well as your loot multiplier just before we get into some combat tips i want to take a quick second here to let you know that i've updated my store with some new designs themed around elden ring and starfield these new designs are some of my favorite paul despawn has done a fantastic job with them to celebrate the launch you can use the code maidenless for 10 percent off anything on the store it doesn't have to be the new designs go to norza.store to check out the range and i'll have a link for all of these things in the description down below please go and check it out so combat tips now the flow of combat in still rising is pretty standard for a souls like with some unique twists you don't have a typical heavy attack really it's a charge attack that will do massive damage if you can fully charge it up and with each weapon type that these animations and the combos will be different there are eight weapon types and each has their own heavy attack and light attack combos. They also have unique dodge and sprint attacks as well and jump attacks. If you jump and do a light attack, you'll stay in the air and swing your weapon, which is perfect to knock down these big sack barrels that like hang around in the air. You can knock them down and usually get an item from them. Or if you jump and then heavy attack, you'll actually do like a ground slam. This is a great attack to do if an enemy is like low sweeping the ground. You can actually jump that attack and then ground slam and deal damage to them. And it kind of allows you to counter attack without actually taking that damage. Each of these weapons will also have a special move. This could be as simple as blocking or counter-attacking. Some weapons have unique special moves. Think of like special Ash of Wars in Elden Ring, for example, or they might even apply an affliction status to your weapon's light and heavy attacks for a limited time, say applying frost to the weapon that you are just doing. Tinkering with the different weapons and special moves, say if you like a weapon's light and heavy attacks, but you don't like their special move, chances are there'll be a weapon in that same category that has a different special move that you may like more. I personally started out using the Falcon and Saber, but I didn't really like the special move and I ended up switching to the fire and ice which had the counter attack special move but has the same attack combos for everything else and i found that weapon to be really satisfying for any alchemical attacks that you do whether it be through a special move or through one of the tools that you unlock which we'll talk about in a second you will use alchemical capsules now these capsules are dropped by practically every enemy they will drop one or two of them but you can buy an unlimited amount from the boutique and it's well worth keeping these stores up if you are using a lot of these alchemical attacks now speking of these alchemical things and afflictions as mentioned earlier there are three of these like status effects the first is flame and this ignites the target causing continuous damage if you get ignited you can extinguish it faster by rapidly dodging frost freezes the target locking them in place so you can follow up with all kinds of heavy damage as they won't actually attack back you can also be frozen yourself whether it be by enemies or by rapid cooling yourself rapid cooling is when you run out of stamina you can actually press y to restore some of that stamina instantly however it will start frost build up on yourself if you do this too much you can actually freeze yourself spamming any attack will actually thaw you out faster. Fulmination or lightning is the third status effect and this electrocutes the target. Every time they are hit, they will take more damage. If you are electrocuted, you can actually clear this by the insulation elixir. It's the only way you can clear it, so make sure you've got one on your hotbar. Those three tools we talked about for exploration, you can actually use them in combat as well and they will apply buildup of these different afflictions. Dash will apply frost, ram will apply fire, and the hook will apply lightning. These afflictions can be applied in other methods, whether it be by throwing grenades, or just the general attacks on the pistol type weapons or even by special moves there are plenty of ways to apply them it is worth calling out that enemies that use a specific type of affliction say a frost automat will have high frost resistance so you don't want to use that same element on those kind of enemies and some bosses will be heavily resistant to these afflictions in general upgrading ages now there are three main upgrade parts other than just the typical leveling up that you'll need to pay attention to the first is your weapon leveling this will cost you the anima essence or souls and various metals the different metals can be found out in the world or bought from the boutique itself. So make sure you're collecting these and exploring as you use them to level up your weapons. The max level 
level for your weapons is 5, and I don't think I mentioned it in the stat section, but for a specific stat, the max level of that is 20. Module slots are unlocked and upgraded with module keys. You'll get module keys from mini bosses and main bosses, or else finding them throughout the world. This will allow you to upgrade the module slots and equip better modules. Modules give you passive bonuses to specific parts of Aegis's kit, say improving your rapid cooling or increasing the window of your blocks and counterattacks, and various other effects as simple as giving you health or making drastic changes to your overall physical damage. The last is your barrette, and this is your potions, essentially. Now, this has two different upgrade slots. One will increase how many potions you have, and the other will increase the amount of healing it actually does when you use it. These are extremely rare in the world, and you won't find a whole lot of these. If you are struggling with healing, you can use the ordinary oil vials to restore your health. These are single-use heal over time items. You'll find these out in the world, but they can just be bought from the boutique as well, so having heaps of these in your back pocket is absolutely well worth doing, as the the barrette upgrades are very rare to find. It's also worth mentioning while we're talking about the boutique to keep checking it regularly as you kill bosses and unlock new areas as new weapons and armor will be added to the store itself. Let me know in the comments your own tips so we can help each other out. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.